All right, everybody, recall from last time, we talked about recall from lecture five. We talked about the generalized logistic function. So uh, I'm not gonna rewrite it, but rather I'm gonna show you it right here, okay? So maybe you wanna pause it if you wanna rewrite it exactly. But again, uh, it's a five parameter value. Uh, so a five parameter model. So for a given day of year and five different parameter values, it's gonna give you what the DBH is. But just note that if you set, if you set the lower asymptote to zero, k the upper asymptote to one and theta to one meaning symmetry and r to one and doy the inflection point to be uh, roughly zero then what do you get the function simplifies to something like this minus doy like that and folks, recall that if you set, and let me change this color, if you set this to be beta naught hat plus beta one hat times x, what do you get? You get fitted probabilities. The lower bound on the probabilities is zero. The upper bound is one. This is the function used in logistic regression. So note this is function used in logistic regression. So long story short, logistic regression is a special case of that formula. Okay, but today we're gonna talk about dendrobands. So our model is going to be y is equal to f of x plus some error, all right? But to be more specific, the variable we're interested in is dbh is gonna be equal to a function of the day of year, meaning, okay, is it January 1st? Is it June 1st? Okay, but also we use this vertical bar to indicate given. Whoops, let me back that out. G given. That's mathematical or statistical notation for given five parameter values, K, L, theta, R, and D, O, Y inflection point plus epsilon. So given five parameter values, which we feed into the day of year and plug in to the generalized logistic regression function, we're gonna get a DBH value, all right. The, now let's talk data. The data that we obtain when collecting, uh, where is it over here? So for example, if you look at this dendroband, all right, the data that we're gonna collect from this dendroband is always gonna be of this form. It's gonna be a form DOY and DBH. We're gonna have two variables, all right, where, for, for example, for January 1st, maybe the DBH is uh, 13, and say for like January 6th, maybe the DBH is 14, and so on and so forth. So that's the nature of our data. Oftentimes, as I said last time, the data looks something like this. It often has sort of an S-shaped pattern to it, where it's sort of flat in the beginning, it goes up, and then flattens out in the winter. But our goal is going to be the following. That is our goal. Our goal is, goal is want, whoops, want to find red curve mm -hmm, that best fits the points. 
Meaning we want the best generalized logistic regression curve that's gonna fit through those points. So we can state it a little bit differently. Goal restated is find, want, want to find optimal K star, L star, theta star, R star, and DOY inflection point star. Usually we use the star notation to indicate optimal. So let me just fix that here. All right. We want to find optimal values that best fits the points. Okay. But in order to do this, to do this, we need two things to do this, right? We, again, what are we trying to do? We're trying to model the growth of trees within a year as measured by dender bands. To do this, we need two things. One, we need a criteria for best fit. What do we mean by best fitting, all right? And we have to be very, very explicit. We have to be mathematically explicit. But then even after we have this criteria for best fit, we need a method to find, whoops, uh, whoop, to find optimal five parameters, parameter values. We need a way to find what the optimal values of K, L, theta, R, and D, O, Y, I, P, R. So let's go ahead and actually do this. So number one, most people commonly guess the following. Most people guess the following criteria, and that's a good criteria. Most people would guess, would, whoops, let me just erase that, would guess, and this is something you've seen in your intro stat class, the sum of squared residuals. What is the curve that minimizes the sum of squared residuals? So going back to our plot, what does that mean? Again, let me change colors here and use blue, all right? You compute all the residuals, meaning the deviations of the points from the lines, you square the values and you sum them. Now that is an excellent guess, but the thing is though, is that in statistics and for reasons which are maybe a little bit beyond the scope of the class, that's not the criteria we use. But rather, we're, we use a criteria called uh, the likelihood criteria. We want to use, we use a criteria of maximizing the quote unquote log likelihood function. This is something that is covered in MTH Math 320 Mathematical Statistics. Now this is not a prereq to this course, so I'm not gonna go into too much detail, but if you've taken this class, you might recognize these terms, and if you do end up taking this class in the future, you'll learn more about this. But the idea is that you have something called a likelihood function. All right, and what is it? It's F of D O Y given those five parameters. However, you're gonna re-express it as script, oh, that's supposed to be an L, uh, so this is L, K, L, theta, R, D O Y inflection point given day of year. Now, I'm not gonna go any further than that, but 
I do want to point this out that this is the criteria. We want to find the values of the five parameters that maximize something called the quote-unquote log likelihood function. But here's a little side note. Side note. How do we find maxima? How do we find maxima? Example. Simple, simple example from a calculus. Say you have a function, f of x is equal to minus x squared. What is that going to look like? Well, if this is x equals 0, all right? What is the maxima of that function? Well, you solve for the derivative equal to 0. So the derivative of x squared is negative 2x equals 0, x equals 0. This is the maxima. That is the optimal value of x for f of x equals minus x squared. But we are not going to do this by hand. In our case, we have five parameters to maximize over. This is an example in one dimension. Rather, we got to optimize over five dimensions. We can't even picture that because we can only draw in three dimensions. So how are we going to optimize in five dimensions? We are not going to do this by hand. Rather, we use the computer, specifically numerical optimization. We're going to let a computer solve and find these values. So this is a topic that's called numerical analysis, and that's covered in uh, many math departments. Okay. The way this is going to work is, all right, uh, uh, the algorithm is as follows. Okay. Number one, make initial guess of optimal five parameters. So you're going to start with an initial guess of all five of those parameters. Next, feed in, oops, feed in initial guess plus data into the optim function in R. Optim is the function that, uh, what's it called, uh, runs numerical optimization. And then the output of that is going to be a guess of optimal parameter values, k star, l star, theta star, r star, and d o y i p r star. Then what are we going to do? Number four, take these values and plot them in red. We're going to plug in those values and plot them in red using that crazy function, using generalized logistic function. All right? So this might all seem abstract, but don't worry, folks. In lecture, we're going to do this using the eyeball method first, and then I'll show you the code, and you'll see that it's actually quite intuitive. But here is the, here is the key take-home message. Take-home message. This method for finding, let me go back to the image. This method for finding the values for that best-fitting red curve, all right? I want you to remember this. This is called the method 
of maximum likelihood estimation. The method of MLE. This is used all throughout statistics, not just here, but it's used to find the optimal values of all sorts of parameters. Example, you can use it to find optimal slope and, uh, sorry, uh, intercept and slope. This is intercept and slope for any kind of regression. So multiple regression, logistic regression, this is one approach that you can use to find these optimal values. But I think that's far enough in terms of this theory. Tomorrow, we're gonna get our hands dirty with some data.